Do you wanna have a successful YouTube channel but all you have is a smartphone? Then this video is for you. I teamed up with my buddy D Nimmin who has a YouTube channel that's completely centered around making content using your smartphone. So we're gonna go through some things that you need to think about if you're getting started on your YouTube journey. So when it comes to creating YouTube content, you really only need a device to record. So a smartphone has a good camera. That's all you need to get started. That's it. Gear is not going to define what it is that you're going to create. It's more about the story. It's more about what you're doing than how you do it. Now, there are some tools that are gonna help you make it easier, but we're talking about just starting with your smartphone. And yes, you can create awesome looking content only using a smartphone. But guys, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Jevin Dovey. I do a lot of filmmaking tutorials, product reviews, and I also do a lot of YouTube training. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications, so you don't miss one of these tutorials. All right, guys, and I'm gonna pass it over to D. He's gonna take it from here and give you some tips on how to use your smartphone to create awesome content. Thanks, Jevin. My name is Dean Nimmin, and over on my channel, I help mobile creators make content succeed on YouTube. And in this video, I'm gonna give you some practical tips on how you can get started on YouTube using your smartphone. The first tip that I have for you is pretty obvious, but a lot of people make this mistake, and that's not looking at the lens on their smartphone. A lot of people are making content and they're looking at the viewfinder or the LCD screen or OLED screen instead of looking at the lens. And the reason it's important to look at the lens is because you wanna make eye contact with the person viewing your video. This makes it a lot more personal, and in some cases, it makes it seem like you're speaking directly to that person, and that's a powerful thing. So a tip to add on here, if you're constantly looking at your face when you have the camera kind of stretched out away from you, I would say just flip it and just start recording yourself using the back facing camera, the one on the other side. And the reason for this is that it's gonna give you some practice of just looking directly into lens. I know it could be kind of awkward at first when you're looking directly into the lens because you wanna like look at yourself and look at how you look. So do some last looks, hold it out, see what you look like, flip the camera and just record and just Practice that because when you look into the lens, that's when you connect with the viewer on the other side. The next tip that I have is to download and learn how to use the YT Studio app. This is a free app created by YouTube and this app will allow you to answer comments on your phone and check your analytics. The next tip is specifically because you're shooting for YouTube and that's to make sure that you're shooting in landscape mode with your phone. There are some platforms that require vertical or portrait mode, but YouTube is not one of them. So make sure you turn your phone sideways and shoot in landscape. Landscape mode. So the standard for video is gonna be horizontal and it's gonna stay horizontal unless there's a major shift in the industry. And that's just the way it is. So one tool to make it easier when you're shooting horizontal is to get a mini tripod. And you can get basically a mount for your phone which allows you to screw on a mini tripod and then when you're holding it out, you basically hold the grip vertical rather than having to try to hold your phone horizontal. And so it makes it much easier to shoot horizontal content because when you're shooting with the camera stretched out, you can hold it nice and easy, keep your arm in a good position and it gives you a good horizontal shot. Or if you're setting it down somewhere on a tripod, it keeps it horizontal. So having this kind of small tripod setup makes it super easy to shoot and create content. Now there's this other case called a shutter case, and I actually really like this case for a couple of reasons. This case comes with a battery built in, and it comes as a battery grip, so you're able to hold it, which that makes it a lot easier to shoot with. So you can pop this battery on and off, but when it's on and you stretch your arm out, you can keep it horizontal and it's nice and easy to hold. Whether you're shooting with the front facing camera or the back facing camera, you could just use your thumb to hold it on this side. Now, the other thing that's really cool about this case is that it's got a place for moment lenses. So you can tie on a bigger lens if you wanna have like a wide lens or a telephoto lens, but it definitely has good uses for those of you who are shooting YouTube content only using your phone. The next tip that I have for you is more of a production tip, and that's to make sure that your lens is clean, your battery is fully charged, and make sure you have enough storage space on your phone before you hit that record button. Nothing is gonna ruin your video faster than getting a fingerprint or a smudge on your lens, or your battery dying right in the middle of a great clip, or you run out of storage. I wanna add on a little bit about organization here. Organization is one of those key things that's gonna make you successful because if you're getting lost in your footage and it's all over the place, then you're gonna get wrapped up more 
and trying to figure out where things are rather than creating content. One of the things I always say is offload your footage every time you shoot. So when you shoot for a day, take that footage and then put it onto a hard drive. And that workflow is specifically for those of you who are editing, say, using a laptop or another computer. Now, if you're only using your phone, then what you're gonna need to do is figure out how much space your typical video is gonna take up in your phone and then make sure that you have more space than that so that when you go out there and shoot, you're not gonna fill up your phone and cause an issue. Having space on your phone and having battery to shoot throughout the entire day are two essential things that will make or break your shoot. If you're always running into the issue of not having enough data storage, then I highly suggest taking a step back and looking at your complete workflow and figuring out how you can make it a little bit easier so that you have enough footage for your shoot day and you have enough battery to last you for the entirety of what you're planning to shoot. And for some of you, that means that you're gonna to have to get an external battery so that you can keep your phone charged throughout your entirety of your shoot. The next tip that I have for you is to not fall into the trap of thinking that you need gear, that you need stuff, you need gimbals and lenses and great microphones to become a great creator or to get started on YouTube. That's simply not the case. What is important is the story that you're telling or the message that you're sharing with the world. If you master that, it doesn't matter about the gear. Now, the gear does serve its purpose. There will come a time where you might wanna get a microphone, you might wanna get a gimbal, you might wanna get a lens, but in terms of getting started, Started, that's not important. Mr. Beast, who just reached 20 million subscribers, he started off on an iPhone and got his first 200,000 subscribers only using his iPhone. Wrap your head around that for a second. D is completely right. Gear does not matter, and that's what I said at the beginning of this video. Gear doesn't matter, just start shooting with your phone. But if you do wanna get a few pieces of gear to add to your arsenal, the things that I would say to look at are a tripod, a case to hold your phone so that you can mount other pieces on, a microphone, and then a light. So sometimes you'll be shooting in darker scenes, and it's nice to have an extra light so you can lighten up your face so that you always have a good look here when you're shooting your content. Honestly, audio is way more important than visuals. However, you do want your visuals to look good. So if you're you're going to be constantly shooting in scenes where there's lots of mixed lighting or there's lots of dark lighting, then a light might be something you should go after so that you can make sure that your face is illuminated when you're on camera talking to your audience. Because you wanna make sure that people aren't clicking off your video because they can't really tell what's going on. When it comes to editing video on your smartphone, you have a lot of great options at your disposal. These are some of my favorites. On the Android side, you have PowerDirector and KineMaster, and as an iOS user, you have KineMaster and LumaFusion, but you also have iMovie, which is free. Now, if you're on a budget or you need a totally free app to get you started, check out Vlogit. That's a great cross-platform video editor. To make your YouTube channel art and your thumbnails for your videos, I recommend checking out the following apps. Snapseed, which is free and owned by Google, super powerful app, and you also have PixArt and Pixelab. If you're intimidated by looking at a blank canvas or you don't yet have the skills to make a design, check out the Canva app. This is a template-based system, and the way it works is you start with another design created by someone else, and you're free to mold it and bend it and shape it and then use it on your own channel. Canva's a great app for beginners. Now, while I did say that gear wasn't important to get started, and that's absolutely true, I do wanna talk about audio for a moment because if the microphone in your phone doesn't sound good and some older phones don't have great microphones, you might wanna think about upgrading your audio and picking up an inexpensive microphone. A great inexpensive microphone is the Boya BYM1 Lavalier microphone. It clips right onto your shirt and costs around 17 or 18 US dollars. If you want something that plugs right into your phone, Rode makes the Rode Video Mic Me and Video Mic Me L that can plug into your lightning port for iOS users or your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for Android users. The next tip is to be mindful of how you're holding your phone and make sure that you're not shaking your phone too much because if you have shaky footage, people are probably gonna tune out. Getting started, it might help to hold it with two hands until you get comfortable with it and then you can hold the phone with one hand and focus on being stable as you share your message. And if you're wondering what I'm shooting this with right now, I'm shooting this on my iPhone XS front-facing camera. That that's the selfie cam and it's the worst quality camera on the phone and I did this on purpose and that's to prove to you that if I can shoot this video on the worst camera on my phone and it ends up on YouTube on a great channel like Jevons, then you can definitely do this too. As both Dee and I have been saying throughout this entire video, gear doesn't matter. What matters is creating content that connects with the people on the other side of the camera. Just focus on your content first. Focus on creating the best content that you can create and really focus on narrowing what you're doing 
into a topic that people want to gravitate towards and they want to follow you for. If you want to learn how to use the apps that I mentioned in this video or just learn how to make better content or be a mobile YouTuber, head on over to my channel. I would love to see you over there. Jevin's going to put a link to my channel down in the description below. Guys, if you want to learn more about how to grow your YouTube channel and how to get your first 1,000 subscribers, I'll put a link right here and you could check out an entire series that I did with Dee's brother, Nick, all about how to get your first 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and Jevin, thanks for having me. I'll see you on the next one.